Welcome inside Gillette Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia. Early on a Friday morning after the Patriots remain perfect, improved to 7-0 with a 36-7 get-out-of-dodge win on Thursday night football over the Miami Dolphins, dropping them to 3-4. and four. I'm joined, as always, by Patriots expert columnist for WEEI.com, Christopher Price. Chris, you've been preaching to me the last <laughs> several minutes before we went on air here. It's all about really surviving Thursday night football. Yeah, and look, Thursday night football is what it is. We know this. The product, more often than not, sucks. And, and, and you want to get out with no injuries or at least a minimum of injuries and the victory. And the Patriots were able to do that tonight. We don't know about the situation right now as we sit here right now regarding Trey Jackson, the young offensive lineman who was injured in the second half of this game. He limped to the sidelines. He did not return. We didn't see him in the locker room after the game. But again, the, the, the most important things when you're talking about Thursday night football, you don't want to get injured, you want to win. The Patriots were able to check off both of those boxes. They also, quite frankly, you, you think about back on this week, they won two divisional games in 96 hours. And so you're able to now say the Patriots beat the Bills, Patriots beat the Jets, Patriots beat the Dolphins. They're 7-0. and They have a lot of distance between themselves and the rest of the division. They've, they're sitting here right now the day before Halloween, a couple days before Halloween, they've clinched the division. And so that, they always talk about that being the number one priority. That's the right. first step on the way to a championship. They've taken the first step really effectively on the way to another championship. The Miami Dolphins, Chris, were not as lucky in the injury category. It was able to walk past the uh, Miami locker room, and there was Cameron Wake just sitting there sullen, alone in his thoughts, and he apparently – has an Achilles injury. We don't know the severity of the Achilles injury right away, but it can't be good. He limped yeah. off the uh, field in the third quarter. He did not return. And that is one of your defensive studs for the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots, uh, as far as we know right now, have not suffered anything quite that severe. Again, as you said, we'll find out about Trey Jackson. I want to go to the start of this game where the Patriots come out guns blazing on their first drive of the game. Tom Brady finds Rob Gronkowski for 47 yards and the touchdown. Great block on the play by Brandon LaFell, really to spring him loose. And Tom Brady talked about that after the game, saying it's the little things that matter. I'm never going to doubt Ron Rivera ever again. This is a kind of a, a shorthand way of saying that Ron Rivera, when LaFell was first signed by the Patriots as a free agent, he used to play for Ron Rivera in Carolina. Ron Rivera sat there and told us that, well, he's a really great blocker, and we all kind of rolled our eyes and said, oh, yeah, great, he's a real great blocker. We saw some of that over the course of the 2014 season. That was once again illustrated this evening. Great block that helped spring Gronkowski. Gronkowski talked about it afterward. He came to the sideline and said, who threw that block? I don't know who threw that block. And it, 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 was, it was one of those moments where you could sense the game turning in the Patriots' favor. They weren't able to get a whole lot offensively throughout the first half, but it was plays like that. They were able to get an edge. They followed that up with a safety, and then they were kind of off to the races after that. I really thought two of the plays that turned the tide, and I asked Bill Belichick about this in the press conference after the game, were the uh, special teams that you mentioned. The one deep punt by Ryan Allen set up a safety that made it 9 nothing, and you could really sense the air go out of the Dolphins' balloon. Down one score, you can get that back, but they were down two scores, and then Brady got the ball back and really established control of the game. And the other play was a great special teams tackle by Matthew Slater and on, on another punt that pinned the Dolphins back uh, deep in their own territory at the six. Dolphins, thanks in large part to a Patriots defense that really showed up big time, was really able to uh, seize control. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we sit here every single week and, you know, we said, I do it, we do it. You talk about special teams and you talk about the advantage that this group of special teamers have when it comes to the rest of the league, the situations that it puts the offense in, the defense in. We saw it tonight, the great punt from Ryan Allen, the ability by Matthew Slater to, to make that tackle. Steven Guskowski becomes the franchise leader for consecutive field goals made tonight. With a great kick. Exactly. He, now, he's now at 26. He surpassed Adam Vinatieri. He had a 52 yarder tonight. These little things, like Tom said before, these little things continue to add up in the Patriots' favor. These, these things that look relatively minute on the score sheet or when you're talking about a highlight reel, they're not real sexy. But in the end, a lot of times, those are the differences between wins and losses. You can always tell, Chris, how appreciative Bill Belichick is after a game like that when he steps to the podium and thanks his staff and his players for executing under very intense conditions because he has said it before on NFL Films and that Super Bowl video, Do Your Job. He expects and um, puts his staff and his players through a lot mentally as well as physically, even more so than physically. And this was an example 
of, as you said, two wins in 96 hours. He put the, this team through a lot. It's a grind. It is. When, when you're looking to turn it around that quickly, you go from Sunday to Sunday, it's one thing. Everyone's kind of got a level playing field, and we all understand the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. Sunday to Thursday is really, really difficult on a number of levels. We left here last Sunday following the Jets game. We were walking past the administrative offices. We saw the lights on, the special team's office lights on. They jumped right into it. There's no time to waste when you're talking about a Thursday night game, turning around from a Sunday game to a Thursday game. Now, clearly, both teams are operating under the same constraints, but at the same time, to be able to come out and execute like this across the board, look, it wasn't perfect, but to be able to execute like this across the board on a short week to show the mental toughness, the physical toughness needed, very impressive work by the Patriots tonight. I know you want to touch on Deion Lewis and what a big factor he had returning to the lineup after missing a game with an abdomen injury. I thought he was key in helping getting Tom Brady's offense under, really underway in the second half. He came into this game, I love this set, he came into this game as only one of three running backs in the league, one of, one of three guys in the league with at least 200 yards rushing and 200 yards receiving. We saw more of that tonight. He was the guy. He was the, you know, the, the, the safety valve quite often for this offense when you had Gronk covered, when you had Edelman covered, when you had Danny Amendola covered. They were able to go to him. He's been able to display a level of consistency, a level of durability, even though he was out last week. Been able to put up phenomenal numbers. He's the kind of guy now when you talk about the Patriots offense, you talk about Edelman, you talk about Gronkowski, you talk about Brady, you talk about the rest of them, he's got to be part of that conversation when you're game planning. Big picture now. The only other time this team has been 7-0 and is you know when. And I tweeted that after the game and got some flack for it. But 2007, look, Chris, the comparisons, the more they win, the more you're going to hear talk about 2007. I know you wrote about it on WEI.com this week saying how it really isn't fathomable right now at this yeah. point of the season. But I don't know, based on what I saw over the last five days, the way this team was able to show mental toughness, maybe we have to reconsider. I hate to go win-loss, win-loss down the schedule like that. Look, in the dangerous, we all do it. But, you know, I, I don't like doing it. But you look at it, and right now there are two games that jump out at me as potential landmines for this team. That's not even taking into account that, you know, the last game of the year in Miami and South Florida, if it doesn't mean anything and they've already lost, they're probably going to treat that game in much the same fashion that they treated the regular season finale last year right. and that they're going to get the rookies, the youngsters, Jimmy Garoppolo. Those guys are going to get playing time. Right now there are two games that jump out at me. The game in New York against the Jets in the game in Denver against the Broncos. Now, look, I understand the Denver offense is horrible right now. The Denver defense in Denver is a real challenge for this team. It's going to be a real challenge for this team. That is going to be one of the marquee games of the year. When you talk about the Patriots offense against the Denver defense, to my mind right now in the AFC, those are the two best units. I can't wait to see them going up against each other. Right, and that's to my next point, and that is Denver and Green Bay play in the Mile High City on Sunday night. One of those teams will be 7-0, and and the other will no longer be undefeated, obviously barring a tie, while the 6-0 uh, Cincinnati Bengals try to become 7-0 and for the first time in their franchise history. They have a huge test, needless to say, with Big Ben probably coming back. They're playing in Pittsburgh. They win that game. You can all but salt away the AFC North to them. But, again, that's what we'll be keeping an eye on as the Patriots rest as we rest a little bit on Sunday. I was walking out the uh, locker room door with Brandon LaFell, and he said to me, I'm going to need this rest. I'll probably need more than this rest. But he was banged up. I mean, it yep. was just kind of an indication, Chris, of what kind of toll this week is. Well, the Patriots take care of business. They improved to 7-0 and for the second time in franchise history, dispatching the Miami Dolphins, handing interim uh, coach Dan Campbell his first loss. Uh, beating the Miami Dolphins, the Patriots did by a final score of 36 to 7. The Patriots play Kirk Cousins and the Washington Redskins on November 8th, finishing a three-game homestand here at Gillette Stadium. For Christopher Price, inside Gillette Stadium, I'm Mike Petralia, WEEI.com.